Ever since I was a child, I definitely had these kind of extra sens sensory perception experiences. Um, and when that happens, when you're a little kid, it's pretty frightening. Um, it started in my dreams, actually. At first, I would have these like really vivid, wild dreams that I would wake up like just like screaming in the middle of the night. Um, and I would have that periodically. And then from that moment, I started to have things of that nature happen in reality. Um, so like seeing dead people and kind of stuff like that happening in my bedroom at night, um, hearing voices, um, having like out of body experiences, a lot of weird stuff. You know, I think that when I was a kid, I, you know, at that time there was a lot going on in my home. So what I'm feeling happened was at a very young age, I learned how to meditate. Okay. You know, just to kind of go inside and just be with myself, even though I didn't know what I was doing. Um, and from well, there- Well, you didn't, but maybe you did. I did, you but know, yeah, exactly. You, you know, you were guided. Yeah. And I, what I feel from there, it just kept uh, keeping my, I guess, third eye open. Mm -hmm. You know, my awareness kept growing. And then sooner, as soon as I knew it, I was seeing things, hearing things, having visions, you know. Um, and, and as a child, things like that are not fun. <laughs> you yeah. know, I was terrified. And I mean, was there ever a period of time when you tried to block it out, tried to get rid of it? And did that last for a certain time? Or did you always just allow it to be? No, I did not allow it to be. Okay. I, I think when I went to, like, later in high school and college, I definitely blocked it out. I went to performing arts school. So I'm a singer, songwriter, and I, you know, was pursuing acting. And I did, like, work in that field. And I just put all my effort towards that. You know, I was like, I had one track mind. I'm going to be famous. I'm going to be an actor. I'm going to be a singer. You know, I'm going to work on my music. And I kind of just allowed that to just go in the background. I would have, like, moments of it. Yeah. But I think, you know... I just was embarrassed by it and I just kind of wanted to keep it to myself. I didn't want people to make fun of me or think I was weird, you know, um, until honestly my senior year of college, um, it started again and I started to get like major anxiety and all these weird feelings that I used to have as a kid kind of all like flushed back or rushed back really quickly. Um, and I didn't really know what to do with that information at that point. Yeah. Um, so again, I kind of stuffed it inside, stuffed it inside, but what was happening, especially after the years after I left college, was I started to get really depressed. I started to get really anxious. Um, my emotional state, um, even my physical state of being just started to like diminish and deplete. Okay. Um, and I went to some dark places, you know, um, but I always feel that from the dark comes the light. And that's the dark night of the soul. Exactly. I sat in that for, for a while. Um, but from that, um, I was kind of called intuitively to see a spiritualist and a healer in New York City. So um, her name is Kelly Piper and I studied with her for a while and I, you know, um, received healings from her and we just like, she was almost like a spiritual therapist, you know? Yeah. But one of the things that happened was she helped me really realize the gifts that I have mm -hmm. and not to be afraid of them and to use them to help the greater good of myself and everyone else around me. And then something happened, spirit rushed in and I wasn't afraid anymore. And I was like, James, this is, you have to do this. Wow. And so that started the calling. And at that moment I kind of put acting and some of that aside and I just focused on my spiritual development um, and training uh, so that I could become a healer and a guru for somebody else. Wow. You enjoying this so far? Did you forget to subscribe? Make sure to do so. It takes two seconds. Just press that little button. The red one. You know the one. Just press it. Little like. All right. Enjoy the rest of this content. Mind you, when I say gifts, I feel everyone has these abilities somewhere, right? They can be cultivated if they are not present. And then some kids kind of carry it with them from childhood, right? Um, but I would have to say that one of my strongest gifts is a deep sense of knowing. Um, I just feel like I ha was even as a child, just new things, you know, new things about spiritual law, about universal truth, about God. I just had this knowing about the beyond and the, and the super conscious mind. Mm. And I feel like that has helped me so much in not only understanding myself, but understanding other people and how to help them and how to heal them. It's almost like I could look at someone and know immediately what this person needs. Mm. And then I will open myself up to the beyond 
and I hear okay. um, a lot and I'll just get those gut feelings like I'll know something uh -huh. um, and I'm not the strongest in clairvoyance that's that's my I guess weakest Claire um, but um, lately I've been able to tap into that as well so I will see pictures well, or you get said visions. you were you know a musician and a songwriter yeah. right you know so I mean uh, we have these modes of how we operate and mm -hmm. how we we relate to the world and mm -hmm. people you know walk into the room and some people hear what's going on in the room and they mm -hmm. get they get that that some people walk in and they can have a feeling and is the room comfortable mm -hmm. does it feel rough does it feel whatever some people walk in and they're like oh this looks amazing you know and mm -hmm. it's like there's different ways of how people relate to their world even on a conscious level so it's always going to make sense that there's different levels of how somebody would activate their gifts, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's absolutely true. When I teach uh, intuitive development, one of the first exercises is doing a meditation, opening up all the senses and seeing which one is the strongest for you, which one are you most mm. connected with. And yeah, like you said, it really depends what they do for a living or, or, or if they're musicians or artists or creators or they visual people, they're more thinkers, you know. Yeah. And so I always say whatever is the strongest, that's what you would focus on uh, trying to develop the most. You yeah, know? well, I mean, it's the path of least resistance, yes. you know. If you like this content, make sure that you like, subscribe and comment below. And we also have amazing link right there for some cool product. I know you want to check it out. I know you want to click it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Come on. You can do it. All right. Until next time, have a beautiful, blessed day.